Hi everybody, Andy Wax, one in Leather Doctor, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. It's been a really long time since I've done a video. Um, can't find my tripod, so now I have my teenage nephew as my cameraman. So, um, yeah, should work out a little better this time. Here's the problem. So, antique rocking chair of a customer. And, as you can see, the arm is broken off. Not in and of itself a big deal. However, the piece of wood that surrounds this is completely gone and they don't have it. So that presents its own problem. So got a couple ideas to try to make it better and um, I think it's gonna come out all right. Let's see what happens. All right, so we're just gonna mix up some epoxy, two part epoxy. And this is gonna help hold the arm in until we can actually figure out what to do about all that missing wood. Gonna put this in here temporarily. Oh, that'll probably stay, it's not gonna hurt anything. Yeah, just to hold it in place a little bit. Okay. So, with this screw countersunk, because we're gonna fill this hole, um, this piece shored up just perfectly to the post and it's got it at the perfect angle for the support to the arm down here. So, so far, everything is as according to plan. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is because of all the wood that's missing on that side while that cures, is I want something underneath so that when I put my filler material on top, it actually has something to rest on while it's curing. So what I decided to do was um, just took some Luan and some wax paper, taped it down, and I'm put it up against the two legs on the good side, and I traced it out really roughly, because it doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm gonna cut this out, and then I'm gonna put this on the other side, clamp it down, and then I have something that the filler material can rest upon while it's curing. So, uh, let's cut this out. So now we've got a form here, because this is really all that I need to, to cut. Again, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be because we're gonna shape it afterwards anyway. Uh, maybe put one more here in the front. Okay. All right, that's gonna work. So if you put a golf ball sized amount on there, you're supposed to put Amount, about the amount of a P. It's all that needs to be gotten there. And there's that. Then you mix. So, uh, 
this is this is absolutely going to work, and I am going to use it. However, to fill up more space a little more quickly, I'm going to use some more of the Mohawk epoxy putty stick. Um, I know it's black; doesn't matter because we're going to fill it over with with the bondo, and then we're going to color it anyway. But I was thinking that while this stuff takes, while the bondo takes a little bit longer to set up, I think. It'll help me fill the void a lot faster if I do this. Yeah, this is gonna take a lot less time and allow me to shape it a little nicer. The, the Bondo, fortunately, is starting to set up now, but, you know, we already started with, with this. We might as well finish with it. I hate to leave a half a tube laying around. And they'll, they'll both sand very nicely. And, but because uh, Bondo is not, you know, much of a liquid, it really was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna to be to pour into that mold that I made. So better we use something that has the properties of clay so I can shape it a little more as I go and then I can fill in the rest with the Bondo. And I forgot to mention that just a little bit of water on your fingertips will A, stop it from sticking and giving you gorilla hands, but B, it'll help slide over the uh, the epoxy paste and allow you to shape it a lot more easily. Just like if you were making one of those pinch pots in grade school. All right, and while we're waiting for everything else to set up, go a little bit left. So let's fill this where the screw is. And we'll sand this flush as well and, and stain it over so it'll look nice. But Okay, so while this is setting up, and it's mostly set up now, uh, let's try taking off the clamps. Let's see how we do. Now we put wax paper on this piece to hopefully stop it from sticking to all this fill material. Hey, look at that, so far so good. All right, that was exactly what I was hoping would happen. And as you can see from underneath, if you can get up under here, we've got a nice flat surface here that we can just smooth out a little bit. Um, this is almost cured. And then we can get our chisels and files and sanders and dremels out and then we can start to make this thing look reasonable. Yeah. There we go, same thing. There's the wood, that's where the wood stops. Okay, so uh, there were some there were some voids that I hadn't seen, so had to refill some of it, which I'll uh, file back off as soon as it sets up. But so far, this has really caught the contour that I wanted it to have. Bottom's pretty flush. And if you walk over here, come along with us, you'll see that this is really pretty darn close to the contour of how this curves down um, and the shape. 
So I like the form that I made. Um, I like the fact that I used that, um, that Mohawk putty instead of the Bondo. Um, the Bondo was just, it was just too hard to work with. So when this dries, um, we're gonna just try to get off the excess. Use sandpaper, use a Dremel tool, use files, use whatever it takes. Um, and we're gonna keep going until this thing is as perfect as it can be. And then uh, the coloring begins. So we'll, um, we'll be back to you in a moment after this is set up and made this as perfect as can be. So this has turned out really, really nicely as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just smoothing it out a little bit and trying to maintain that curve. And I think we've done that. Yeah, so now I think it's ready um, for color. Okay, so now just a little sanding sealer uh, just to make sure that when we stain, paint, etc., on top of this that it doesn't sink in too much um, because of all the different colors here. So we're just going to try to block it. Yep, that's all I wanted to do. We'll let that dry and then the coloring will begin. Now we're just going to finish off the whole thing with a little T-coil to protect the new finish and to spruce it up just a little bit. And go, give it a little bit of that gloss back. All right, and the chair is finally back together. It has been sanded, it has been sprayed, it has been touched up. And as you can see from looking at the left side and the right side, uh, the right side was the piece where all that wood was missing and the arm was broken. And now I think the customer is going to be delighted. And um, yeah, I am very, very pleased with it. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, please stay tuned for the following brief message. Remember, stem cell transplants save lives. So for a painless home test, to see if one day you can donate to the right person, go to giftoflife.org.